I went to the RV show and looked at brand new RVs. Then I looked at a 10 year old fifth wheel. The difference was unbelievable. What the heck happened to the RV industry? Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz and I have been doing a series about the good and bad of the RV industry. If you've been watching my recent videos, you're probably scared to buy a new RV. And honestly, I don't blame you. The problems people have been having with brand new RVs are seemingly endless. Roof leaks, slide problems, issues with jacks, wall failures, frame failures. These brand new RVs are falling apart and it didn't used to be that way. Now, I have been camping since the 90s and I've had a total of nine RVs. I think I noticed the difference with my brand new 2020 Grand Design fifth wheel. I had a 310 GK and it seemed like every time I moved with it, something fell apart. I was like afraid to open the door because I didn't know what I would see. The big thing was the island, it collapsed. But also trim came off. One of the recliners unhooked one time and it walked out in the middle of the room. The microwave actually opened and would spill its contents, it seemed like there was always something falling apart with that rig. Well, one day I had a neighbor with the exact same 310 GK, only his was not a 2020, his was a 2018. His name was James and he told me, oh, he just came back from Alaska. So I said, okay, so how many things fell apart? Because I know those roads are rough. And he said, nothing. My camper is solid. And I've been hearing similar stories from other friends. Larry and Kathy have a 2016 Reflection, which is a tier lower than the Solitude. They took it all over the country. They live in it full time. They've never had anything fall apart. Somewhere along the line, depending on the model and the manufacturer, the RV industry stopped building quality. They went from solid wood to cheap composite, basically one up from painted cardboard. They went from using nails to glue and staples. You can really feel the difference. At the RV show, I went into lots of new rigs. By the way, I was at the big show in Quartzsite, Arizona. I went in and out a ton of new rigs. I went into rigs that cost over $200,000, even $300,000. And I could not believe the difference when compared to a 10 year old toy hauler. Now what I'm talking about is a 2013 Raptor Velocity package. I have new friends, Deb and Les, who have been the one and only owners of this toy hauler. As a matter of fact, I met them in Quartzsite and they told me after they looked at all the new rigs, they've decided to hang on to their Keystone. They bought it brand new, they ordered it. Now they did get an upgraded package. Back in 2013, they paid $67,000. Now in today's Money, that's around 88,000. They really are not building them the way they used to. When I stepped into their toy hauler, I could really feel the difference. We're talking solid cabinets, solid wood, solid wood doors. I could feel the build quality. There is no way that this trailer was ever gonna fall apart. This was not made with glue, sticks, and staples. This was made with nails. It was solid. I looked at the valances because I mentioned that my valances fell off in the solitude. There is no way that these were gonna go anywhere. Deb and Les have traveled with their toy hauler and they've had very few problems. I was really impressed also by the counter. The countertop was solid surface and it felt like granite. It felt cold to touch. The good fit and finish. All of the fit and finish is really incredible. It even has crown molding. When's the last time you saw real crown molding in a fifth wheel? Now this is solid, but it's not super heavy. The dry weight is 14,000 pounds. Now you remember me saying that the 67,000 they paid for it is 88,000 in today's dollars. Now there was nothing that I saw brand new in that price range. So this is less, but actually you're getting more you're getting something solid that's going to stay together. I would say if you have a quality travel trailer, fifth wheel, toy hauler, motorhome like this in that era, 
definitely hang on to it. Now I do want to pause because in 2013, they only did one year with the bed like this. I want to show you the bedroom. The bed is at an angle and the reason why is if you're on the bigger side, you can walk around the bed. There's more space. How cool is that? I have never seen it. I think that's something that Keystone should bring back. So what happened? Why aren't they still building RVs like that? Well, there's several reasons. Number one is to save money. That's pretty obvious, right? Keystone got bought out by Thor. Thor is really in it for the profit, it seems. And I'll tell you, Thor owns a lot. They own Airstream, Heartland, Heimer, Dutchman, Jayco, and others. So when that happens, when you have a company that's bought out by a big conglomerate, I think it's easy to lose track of quality. But it doesn't have to be that way. And I'm making these videos, hopefully to wake up Thor and others like them to bring back the quality. Another issue is weight. I mentioned the dry weight of this toy hauler is 14,000 pounds. I know a lot of people don't want to buy a one ton. So RV manufacturers started lightening the load so that you don't have to have a one ton. Maybe you can get away with a three quarter ton or even a half ton. So the RV manufacturers started to make lightweight trailers. And the final reason is a biggie and that's COVID. COVID caused all kinds of disruption in the labor market and in the supply chain. When I toured the Grand Design factory in 2021, they had so many problems getting parts that every day at 7 a.m. Grand Design would send a fleet of vans to the local Lowe's hardware store. They would meet with the manager and find out what they could take for the day. Sometimes it would be a load of wiring or insulation. It was whatever they could get their hands on because they needed parts and there was a big shortage of just about everything. Now here are some tips tips if you're shopping for a used RV. If you're shopping for a towable, like a travel trailer, fifth wheel, or toy hauler, I generally recommend that you shop for 2018 or older. Now this is going to vary depending on the manufacturer and the line. The best bet is to join the Facebook or other forum for what you're interested in and get the scoop from the owners. Find out when the quality started going south and look at the years before that happened. For example, in 2014, that's when many Airstream owners will tell you that things kind of started going bad. So you want to look older than that if you're looking for an Airstream. If you're shopping for a used Class A, there is a different sweet spot. DEF came in in 2010. This is an additive that was required for all diesel engines. A lot of people are against DEF because it's very expensive to keep adding it and it requires more maintenance in general for the engine. Most diehard gearheads will tell you that the better engines are prior to 2010, pre-DEF. In 2008 was the start of the Great Recession and many high-end motor coach builders started to cheapen their build just so they could stay in business. So the sweet spot really is before 2008, but you still need to look at quality. Some of the quality motorhomes that I recommend for 2008 and before are Prevo, Newell, for travel, Country Coach, Beaver, Monaco, and American. Now, many of these builders also put out a cheaper entry-level floor plan. So you want to do your research and make sure that you're still getting quality when you're looking at these models in the used market. Now, as far as Class C's go, Winnebago used to always be the top of the heap, but recently they too have been struggling with quality issues. If you saw my recent video with Hildy and Dave and their Winnebago view, it leaked so bad that the inside got soaking wet. If you know when the sweet spot is for Winnebago as far as what years to buy used, let me know in the comments. No matter what you buy, new or used, always get an inspection. People do trade in their problems, so you want to make sure that you've got a good one. And it's a good idea to learn some basic RV repair so that if you're on the road and something happens and it's minor, you can fix it. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share, and let me know in the comments any tips that I've missed. If RV life is calling you, I hope you come out here and give it a try.